All right, we are live. Good morning, everyone. Uh, hi, Brian. Hi, Carolina. Hi, David. Uh, Bree, Karen, uh, Pavel, Sarah, Sia, and Will. Hello, everybody. And morning, today everyone. is uh, Saturday, September 17, 2016. We have our regular Saturday webinar with um, Karen Newman. Welcome, Karen. Thank you very much. It's good to see everyone again. I missed you. So, thank you nice for coming you. again, and thank you for for um, doing the doing the uh, doing the webinar as a channeler. Mm. Um, announcements to, tomorrow: We have uh, another Reiki one A class. It's uh, your last chance to jump on the wagon. I believe light worker has to have three chakras developed very strongly. One chakra is the heart chakra. It's Reiki. Throat chakra is channeling, and top top two chakras actually three and four is um, is meditation and is meditation. So to develop all, all four of them, you need Reiki. So tomorrow we start another round of Reiki, Reiki one a, and and then we'll go to Reiki two, Reiki three. So so it will be the last chance to jump in, and to do that, go to humancolony.org. And there, there is like the, right there on the on the top, there is uh, Reiki class one A with Jim and Max. Click on that and uh, join us tomorrow, uh, 11, 11 a.m. Eastern time. We start and it's four hour class for one A. Do we have any other, other announcements? Let me let me read the calendar. Jim is doing a um, channel panel, which is a great honor for mm -hmm. us. Yes. And um, some of the channelers there on the channel panel are my favorites. You find it again on humancolony.org, right there, channel panel. You click on it, you get the links. It's a very good deal. It's very inexpensive, and you can participate, watch it in real time. It's like a, a big hangout, I think. I don't know what platform do they use, but it is a big broadcast. And there is um, a, a group of our favorite channelers. Uh, Brad Johnson is there and Sean Swanson. Hmm, they sound similar. These are my, uh, my personal favorites. Okay. Um, let me see what else is on the calendar. Uh, Jim is coming back next Saturday. And um, who wants to channel the week after that, let's come together and, and plan. Because uh, on Hukula Founders, we can, we can plan. So through Skype, connect to me and we'll see what we will plan out. So of October 8th. Mm. This is everything. Any more announcements? Uh, Karen, do you have any advertisements? No, I do not. You can listen to my radio show on Tuesdays or on archive, it's called About Oneness. Uh, you can just you go to Mixcloud and type in About Oneness and hear it in the archive. Or if you want to tune in, you can go to pyramidonenetwork.com and listen. And if anyone wants to be a guest, please send me a message, and I would love to have you. So Yay. We need a I guest every week. Yeah, Mark, Max was on last week, and uh, yeah, awesome. Yeah, so to watch every week I need a new guest, so I'm never, I'm never at a loss. I'm never not needing a new guest on the show, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Karen, for having me. It was it was nice. It's a very, very friendly environment. And you can watch our thank recording you. on um, Hukul on, on um, Hukul TV on YouTube. Yes. And it's also on um, humancolony.org. There is a link there. Yes. Um, Brie, uh, where do we get, uh, do we get uh, questions from audience outside of the webinar? Do you, do you watch any streams? Text yeah, boxes. um on the YouTube live stream I'm watching four questions. All right. To get there you go to uh humancolony.org, click on that event, and uh, there is there is a link which is called YouTube. Click on that YouTube link, you'll be able to get there and um uh, and type in your questions. Now I think we're all ready. Okay, good. I'm ready too. <laughs> Uh, yeah. let, let me do my chant. You you seen much better, but I, I like my homemade chants. It's shamanic style.
We are very pleased to be here today with you. We are Theos and we are welcoming to everyone with their questions and anything they would like to talk about that we may or may not have an answer to, but we will try. We send you much love and send you first namaste. Hello. Well, welcome, Theos. Uh, it's an honor to be in your presence. It's my main question is last couple of weeks is is a big crisis coming we do not see ever a moment where there is this thing called crisis because everything is everything is exactly as it has been created and you are the creators of all that is we would only say to you if you wish something to be different then your focus for the coming time needs to shift you draw to you what you focus upon and that is a universal truth it's spoken about often it's spoken about with great relish it's easy to take responsibility for the things that are going well. It's more challenging to take the same joy and responsibility for things you perceive that don't go well. This crisis you speak about, for some, may be the best time of their lives because they are driven to do new and greater things. This could be the worst time of people's lives as well. So we do not give predictions of future events because timelines shift, people shift within them. And we guarantee you that every single one of you is living in your own reality. And that reality will be specific to every single one of you. So if you choose to participate and in an event called crisis, then we wish you the most joy in doing so. Focus upon what you want and where you want. Perhaps there is a piece of you that wants this, that wants this experience that will rise to this challenge. That's okay. We will not say that this is happening 100% to 100% of the people because that is not possible in this multi-dimensional multiverse within which we live. Everything is possible and everything is true. So will there be a crisis? Yes. Will there not be a crisis? Yes. Will there be everything in between and everything unimaginable? Yes. It's a very particular question that you have. We will say to you, and we had this same and after you were on her radio show, because she has much resistance to this idea. But we also reminded her that in 2012, she foresaw something coming for her life, something that she would face, and in fact, that has come. Most of it, however, it has not been as terrible as she had thought. While she stands within it, it is not anything like what she thought it would be. So our message to her and our message to you is what will come will come because some level we are all creating the future for ourselves what you do in the moment 
what you choose in the moment is all you will be able to control. So choose what you want, stand in your own truth, regardless if there's crisis or not. Thank you very much. Um, that, that actually, yeah, that would be my favorite perspective, right? We always try to look at the broader perspective only because we see it from that angle. When you're standing in the midst of something, it is much different. It is much different. But the perceptions that you have are particular for you. You can stand in the same room with another person and have a totally different experience. You see it in families all the time. Your brother thinks something different than you when you're watching the same television show or when you're eating the same piece of food or when you're having a conversation. The perception, the uniqueness of each individual perception is exactly that. And that is the thrill of being here. We had another thing we wanted to communicate because you all are so focused on outer things and aliens and these things. But we wanted to try to excite you about this mission that is being on Earth. Your body is sort of your ship. You have been given this vehicle to use and to perceive this world, this mission, this mission Earth, you might say. And that is a miracle in and of itself. You came into this body, this organic thing that grows and changes. It reacts to what you do to it. It allows you to have perception. You're sort of the Mars rover of your own planet, but you have many more possibilities. You have the chance to interact with other beings and create and perceive. So if you can realize that we are really just here for the experience you will realize that enlightenment is a question that doesn't need to be answered for, because there is really no question. It just is. So we would share that with you and we hope that we answer your question. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, the, the answer was sort of on the intellectual side. Is there a way you can give us some magic, like a blessing which would help us with the idea of the crisis? We say that you can choose peace in every moment, that you can choose love in every moment. Choose that. And if you are doing that in every moment, the circumstances around you will not matter. There is the idea that there will be lack, but there is lack now. There is the perception that there will be pain, but there is pain now. You can live your life for something that may happen, or you can live your life in the moment of now. We send you love. We ask you to choose love. Choose peace. There is a beautiful knowledge that comes with being from our perspective, and that is that you are eternal, and that will never change. That is, you are an eternal being, and nothing will change that. You will change vehicles, you will change location, you may incarnate, you may not, but you are. And that will never change. So being is, is. Choose love, choose peace, choose your knowing that you are eternal and the rest is just a game, a theater piece that you are participating in. Play your role to your greatest stability and there will be nothing to worry about. Some may go down in flames, some may rise above the challenge, but 
That is just what is. It's all okay. If you focus on the negativity of something, you will participate in the negativity of it. There's a great story that we will share with you about a man who lived on this earth. And he did terrible things to people. He was a robber. And one day he had robbed a lot of people and he was being chased by the villagers because they were going to get him. And in his fear of being caught, he hid. And as he hid, he heard a woman who was going through childbirth and she was having a hard time. And in his moment of clarity, he realized he had to help that woman. So he went to her and he looked at her and in the moment of her giving birth and him helping her, he remembered his love for his mother. He remembered his humanity and he helped the woman and she had this baby, but she was not doing well. So he against his own safety, because they were after him, took this woman to the village to receive help. And what they did is they took the woman and took the baby, but they killed him, even though he had done this great act of humanity. And when he got to the afterlife, he stood before his judgment. And this is a metaphor, but he stood be before his judgment. And he was told that because of his deed, he could choose to spend one day in heaven or 7,000 years in hell. What would he choose? And he thought about it for a moment. And then a wonderful seer walked by and said to him, choose heaven for one day. Choose that moment where you can choose to do good and you can choose to help people and then face your hell. So he went to heaven and he sent healing and love to everyone and everything he could find. And he chose to do as much good within that 24 hour period as he could. And then of course his 24 hours was up. But he had to go back to his judgment and then the man who was judging him said, well, I'm looking now and I see that it's changed. You can now do 7,000 years in heaven and 24 hour days in hell. What do you choose? So he says, I choose heaven again and I choose good. And the moral of the story is that he can change his world drastically by doing good, erasing the negativity. So in every moment you can choose to live in hell or you can choose to live in heaven. You can choose to help other people or you can choose to suffer. We would say to you, choose the 24 hours in heaven and see how much change you can make in the world. That is a beautiful story. Thank you, Theos. It um, helps put things in perspective. And I, I was wondering if I could ask about us co-creating this reality and in regards to what you're talking about, choosing things in the now that support the highest good and your own highest path um, instead of putting focus on perceived negativity um, I'm trying to wrap my mind around this in regards to say some of the very negative stuff out there that is happening that I understand or that I've researched into um, if I know these things are happening how can I most easily 
shift myself into that reality when it's kind of like you step off a cliff and you know you're going to fall, so you fall. Um, I know these things are going on, so how can I put these things into a new perspective where I can truly believe that they're not happening? And how is that not being ignorant and um, those other words associated with that, if that makes sense? Well, first we would say to you that they are happening. They are happening. And can you erase all negativity from the world? No. Should you try? Well, you can try. But you won't succeed because we are in a dualistic manifestation of this world. There is no light without darkness. There is no birth without death. There is no happiness without sadness. There is no pain without relief from pain. There is no joy without sorrow. That is the way it is. So that acceptance of that first is really truly going to take the ownness out of feeling like, why is this happening? It's happening because it can happen. You, we perceive that you believe that pain doesn't have a purpose or bad things don't happen for a reason. The reason they happen is to highlight the difference between good and bad. It's always both. It can't be any other way. It really can't. The memory of who you are being this eternal being that we spoke about is what will give you the perspective. If you truly believe that you are eternal, if you truly believe that nothing can ever truly harm you, then you will gain the ability to see it for what it is. It's an experience. It's a infinitesimal experience of the experiencer. And the experiencer ultimately is the one God, but you are that part of that being that has come to have its unique experience and to perceive it. It's very big, the question you've asked, and the concept of explanation can take a lifetime. And of course, this is the biggest question of our lifetimes why, how, but truly the answer is just all that is, is, and will be, and can be, because it is. The peacefulness, the perception that you're looking for is the true understanding of your eternal nature, that you are eternal, there is nothing that can happen to you that will ever make you cease to be. You may cease to be in this body. That is inevitable. We will all live and die. That is the way it is. That's not a very popular answer, but it is the way this world is set up. You are born. You grow up, you live, and at some moment you leave. And then you may come back or you may go somewhere else. It doesn't matter. It's your choice eventually. But that's the way it is. And your need for understanding is only the need to really understand that you are eternal, that, that you are a part of all a part of what is, and that will never change. It can never change, because you are only. We answer the question when people ask us, how are we? We always say we are. We do that with a little bit of play, because we know that 
it sounds very spiritual but at the same time it's true we are we are and you are you are, will always be you will be nothing else but you will always be that is the one thing that is true and there's a very wonderful saying that says nothing in this nothing that is real can be threatened and nothing that is not real exists and we know that you are eternal and that you are real and the rest doesn't exist in the broader perspective so the quest of man is to realize this because in that realization you have your peace the body is transitory the world is transitory this moment is transitory what is not transitory is you you can understand it's not a grand answer focus on things in the life that you want to impact and do your best to do so action based in love is the most glorious of things it's why we're here to act in love to find that that is our greatest strength so do something about the things that you don't agree with whether it's sending energy but energy sending is only one thing do something in love that is beautiful thank you so much theos um i love that a lot can you please um well actually let's go next we have a question from pavel so if you would like to go ahead hi pavel hi Theos. can you hear me yes you're good Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, I have a question, uh, a personal one. Um, if uh, there is a message for me uh, from from my guides, and if there's something you want to tell me. One moment. Karen is the psychic, not us. And what we perceive in you is a restlessness of not knowing what way to go with many different things. We would say to you that choosing anything is fine if you are deciding to move or to change your job or to have another child or anything whatever you choose is fine we would caution you to take the time to look at every possibility and the thing that seems the furthest away that requires the biggest leap of faith choose that do that because that will give you the biggest thrill that's the message we have for you what is changing in your life at the moment Pablo? what is changing now for you uh, the big change now is going back from russia to israel with my family <laughs> Do it. Take the risk. Because that there is a there is something about when stakes are higher. Do you if you understand what we mean? When the risk is bigger, the reward is also bigger. Reward you even more because it's such a 
push forward. Being willing to put yourself in an entirely risky situation. And we don't mean risky by political sense, but risky in the idea of digging deep within yourself and allowing yourself to do something completely different, completely new, where you really have to trust that everything will be okay. It's a very big propelling force because in a way you really let go of a lot of things. You let go of trying to control things and you have to allow things to flow to you. So we would say the most thrilling thing would be to go, but it's always your choice. Sometimes the greater the risk, the bigger the reward at the end. But staying where you are is also okay. It's what you want. We like the thrill. We would go for the roller coaster as opposed to standing and watching the people on it. But that's us. So go sure. for it. Yeah. Or not. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, it's really hit the, hit the point. Uh, and about the profession, too. Good. Yeah. Thank you. I wanted to follow up with a question uh, about the Russia and Israel, which just came up. It was in my mind. What are the spiritual, energetic, um, I would say, signatures of Russia and Israel? What is happening with them now? Uh, what do you see energetically? What, what are they doing? What is happening with Russia and Israel? One moment. We, we're going to answer your question, and we are also going to sort of tap into your worldview a little bit. Um, the thing that is happening throughout the entire world, and also with Israel and Russia, is you have power plays going on at the moment, and you have children at the helm of each power who are playing a game of chicken of who will blink first but it's truly a game it's truly a game between all of them we would say the world as it's being run in many places has been run by children who are having temper tantrums and trying to establish that they are king of the hill Children, very oftentimes when they play, when they win the game, they go on to another game. Israel is a country that still finds its identity in trying to prove that they have a right to be. They want to be known as having the right to be who they are, that they are the chosen land of Israel. And for them, that is very much the identity and communication that they are trying to push forward into the world. So anything that is threatening their right to be will be met with strong resistance. And it is one of those situations that we can only hope when the chips are down, as they say, clarity comes into the minds of the leaders who run each country and that they choose for the goodness of all, that they don't choose to throw rocks, but they choose to plant flowers. We have great faith 
that in the 11th hour, clarity will come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. David? Yeah. Hello, Dios. Thank you, man. Hello. Who are you? I am David. Hi, David. I um, was interested in any kind of thoughts from you or guidance about my journey. Um, I've been made aware from spirit about my abilities as a healer. And um, sometimes it's it's pretty amazing to hear the things. And I just um, was looking for some kind of guidance on how to uh, go through this journey and uh, be uh, reach the possibilities that I've been told that uh, are there for me. Is that clear? It's kind of... We would like you to know that your path is wherever you are. No matter where you're standing, you kind of can't fall off the path because your path is always right with you. What is your biggest challenge at the moment? Um, finances and connecting to people know that I am a healer so that I can help them. So being in a, in a stable environment, a place to live, be able to have food every day and then get out there and, and be able to help so that I can help others and be in that position where I'm more able to help them. Okay. We have several levels of answers, but we know what you're asking, and we will answer your question directly in the way you want to hear it, but then we're going to give you our broader perspective of it. In order to gain customers, in order to get the word out, you require action. You require simple marketing you require simple communication and we would encourage you to one who's doing what you're doing and doing it well and do what they do and model after them to sit and do nothing and wait we're not saying you're doing that but to sit and do nothing and wait for it to suddenly sort of come down upon you is really not how this world works so we would encourage you to take action in order to put out the information that you are available, that you are willing to assist people in their journey to health and to well-being. That is a simple answer, and that requires effort, and it requires action. So we encourage you to take action now at the end of this talk to take action immediately because it's possible to do there are many that do this if this is your joy to do it we would not want anyone to base what they do or believe about themselves <laughs> Send energy to whoever is needing that ambulance, please. We would not want you to take anything that someone said to you about your own ability to be the authority of it. You need to be your own authority about what you want to do. The desire born within you is there for a reason. There would be no desire if there was no ability. So trust that. It's not for someone else to tell you that you will be this great thing. You are already great. There's no doubt about that. But find that belief in yourself about your ability, about what you're here to do. 
because that will drive you. If I walk up to someone and I say, you are a great basketball player and this person has never picked up a basketball, that's really not going to help them. They have to find that inner drive. So understand what it is that's motivating you to go down this road, to walk this path. If your greatest joy is helping people, it will stop you from doing it. Joy is always a better attraction than anything else. So be sure that you want this, because if you want this, there will be nothing or anyone or any situation that will keep you from it. Heal everyone, love everyone, serve everyone. That is the greatest calling that you can have is serving other people, helping other people. There's nothing greater than that. Nothing, nothing greater than this. Nothing. So do it because you have to, because it's all consuming, because it's what drives you. And the opportunities will come. They will come from your effort, but not from sitting around waiting. Do whatever you have to do to make it happen. Be tireless, flyer, spam the internet. But do it with love. Give, give, give. And we would say to you, if you are giving healing, it has to be truly a gift. Do not say, I will heal you for a certain amount of money. Give and ask for donation. Donation is different than charging for a service. Service, true service, yes, is very much a gift that you give to someone. And you give it without expectation. You give it truly because it's law. But that way, increase the difference between purchasing something for the reason of exchange as opposed to giving something and receiving another gift back. It should end that way. But be tireless in your pursuit of wanting to serve. Karen talks about something a lot and it's something that she wants to share with you right now. She says, because she heard it and it stayed with her, that Mother Teresa, only problem, her only problem was that she didn't have enough time to help the people that she wanted to help. That was her only problem. It wasn't anything else. And in the West, we will tell you, in the Western world, having things, having enough, whatever that means, is a different perception because you are criticized in the West for not having this or that. But that's really everyone's individual choice. Generally, the people who truly serve rarely have the biggest car, the best house, the most to eat. But that doesn't change the drive to do it. So decide, do you really want to serve? Trust, again, with the risk being high. Let that risk propel you. But serving is serving. And it's not done for any other reason than to give with no expectation. If you want an income of certainty, we would say to you, get a paying job and serve. 
it's both, and it can be both. But you can serve always, but don't mix up the two. Selling a service is not serving, that's selling a product. It's a fine line, but the line is there. Very nice. Does that help you? Oh yeah, that was wonderful. Thank you. Much love. Much love to you. Yes, thank you. I think that was helpful for many people out there right now as that is a hot topic, finances. Um, so we have a question next from Jonah. And she is asking, does everyone have a purpose in this life? And if so, how can we find it? Thank you so much. The body was trying to breathe and we were trying to speak. Everyone has a purpose. The purpose is to be here. So yes, it's a simple answer and we don't want to make light of the question, but it is one of those answers that only can be answered by yourself because your purpose is your joy. Your purpose is your decision. It's the direction you want to go. And there's nothing more than that. You can decide to go this way and that is your purpose. And then you can decide to go that way and that is your purpose. And both are fine. Everyone has the purpose because they showed up here. They were born here. They are. Great purpose is a judgment that humanity and people put on each other. They want spectacular fireworks. The greatest purpose of any human being is to serve selflessly other human beings and help them remember their own divinity, their own eternal being. That is the greatest purpose. Love is the greatest purpose. The rest is also fine. So that's the answer. There's nothing more you can say about it. Choose what inspires you. Give, be, love. Think love, be love, do love. That's the greatest purpose of all. We hope it will be your purpose. Thank I you. have a beautiful dog looking at me. Definitely a cute dog. <laughs> the dog is bringing joy to other people here too. <laughs> um, okay, wonderful. Next we have, uh, switching gears a little bit, a question from Firstborn in the YouTube live chat. He would like to ask, what are the gestures some people see when they take DMT? The, what is the question? The gestures, like the, um, the clowns, not the clowns, but gestures, clowns, same sort of category. Those people that dress up in the goofy outfits with the jingle hats back in the day. Well, <clears throat> Sarah did an ayahuasca journey and she did not see gestures. But she can imagine that others do. Everyone sees them. Whatever in that experience is always there to guide you to yourself. Sometimes looking at the more negative things in your 
positive things. It's all just a journey into greater knowing of yourself. That could be personified gestures. Maybe gestures are their guide. Maybe gestures are their joy. No, no set thing that people see in DMT other than okay. what they are meant to see. That's a question that they should ask their guides when they are under this or on this journey. Why are the gestures here? And they will get their own answer. But the gestures are merely fabricated beings within their own, what's the word, within their own experience. And they may serve as guides or teachers because everything truly is a teacher for us. So we would say they are teachers teaching what we cannot say this morning. We don't know for them personally. Okay, that is very interesting. Thank you so much. Um, we have a question next from Ebo, excuse me, eBayzoid11 on the YouTube chat asking, he would like to ask, he or she, sorry, would like to ask a scientific question. I understand charge is tiny photons which travel in geometric shapes creating all characteristics of matter, even dimensions and time. Is that correct, that these photons are the building material for all dimensions? We will put on our quantum physicist hat for one moment. Beautiful. <laughs> Matter is what is the creative of all things, but also the space in between is part of that creation. It is represented in photons, but there are many different things that are smaller than the photon that are also part of that creation. What is the purpose of the question other than a yes, no answer? we would say yes and no, both to the question. It's bigger than that. We don't have the ability to explain it in depth other than to say that all matter is relative to positive and negative forces and electronic, electronic charges, but it, there is also more than that. It is not just this or just that. It is more. But geometric patterns are the basis of creation from the first cell to the second cell. It is all a matter of geometry and, and, and a continual expansion of perfect formation, the tree of life, the flower of life, all of these shapes are part of what makes up everything in the physical universe, physical universe. But there's an entire part of the universe that is not physical and matter is part of it, but it's also not part of it. There is nothingness the space in between, which we would say is greater than the space in which it inhabits. So, yes and no is our answer. Okay, wonderful. Yes, it's a very complex <laughs> topic indeed. Thank you. Um, okay, we have a question from Shirley. She is asking if there are any messages from her higher self for her. There's always a message from the higher self. 
Apple would like to answer the question. We perceive that Shirley has the feeling that she is in some way trapped in her current life situation. In some ways, she is in a situation that is not easily changed by, by her current perspective. But don't forget that progression is also change and slow choices, whether they would be simply changing the perspective and, and getting on board with her current situation or making a drastic change. Small choices will eventually shift her out of her current situation. Nothing is permanent. You are not trapped. You are merely delayed in your transition to something else. And the delay is not by mistake. In the moment, you have many things you can learn and choose to learn. So don't feel trapped. Feel that you are in preparation for movement. And then within that, prepare. Prepare to move, doing the little steps you need to, to exit your current situation. You are loved, surely, and you have strength you don't know that you have. Trust that. You will find your way. You will find a way. It will happen for you. That's Thank all you. Yes. Okay, wonderful. Um, we have a question next for Jess444. She's asking, has my heart chakra opened again after protection closed it from a negative reptilian attack? You are responsible for opening your own heart chakra. And that can be done through meditation, through choice. Is it open now? I would say it's never been completely clamped down. That would be impossible. You would go without being able to feel or to love anything. The ideal would be now to open it without fear. Closing the heart chakra only gave you the strength to believe that you had nothing to fear. We would say to you, there's nothing ever to fear, but we do understand that Fear is something that you participated in. We would say to you, it's safe to open your heart. Always. It's for you to decide you want to open it now. And again, That's all we have to say about that. Okay, thank you. She um, had a follow-up question regarding the status of her other chakras at this time because she's currently undergoing a lot of healing. In balancing your chakras, you can do that daily by meditation, by focusing on each one individually and sending love and light to them. You are, and this is true for everyone, you are always operating from a different 
chakra perspective always because in every situation there is a chakra element to it whether it is just in the morning waking up and realizing you need to relieve yourself that is something that is based on your metabolism but also in your base and that is part of your base chakra there is that need to nourish yourself because that is also what the body needs that also deals with your lower chakras but also within your solar plexus the first time you look for information whether it is the news or something on the internet or facebook or talking to another person that is more informational and that would be when you're thinking so every situation if you feel good about it it will have something to do with your heart if you're loving if you're angry about it that also goes down into the base so in every moment in every day of every situation you're like a light beam going up and up and down and up and up and down so nothing is static within the body nothing is static within the spirit you always need to seek balance always you can do that in meditation and just taking a moment so that you have in every moment the ability to choose your reaction to whatever because when you start to still yourself you create a little bit of space between what's happening and then the person that is perceiving it and when you have that space which is generally represented by breath the breath that you take in in the moment of perceiving it it gives you the ability to see it for what it is to choose your reaction to it so we would say to you meditation is the best way because you have that moment of stillness you create that space you're able to give yourself some energy to each of your chakras and to balance them if you start your day balanced it'll be very easy in the moment something comes in that tends to unbalance you to look at it and choose do you want to be unbalanced or do you not want to be so meditation is our answer you have to look at everything and see how you perceive it but that is a lifelong thing that is always so it's not like you hang a picture on the wall and it's there forever you're constantly having to shut down the body at night sleep wake up the body deal with new perceptions every moment of every day so it's something we would encourage everyone is to take a few moments create a stillness create centeredness and then go into your world and then you will have the choice whether your chakras are open or closed you can also tell the dominant chakra by your reaction your impulse reaction to something we would give you some very good tips that if you feel anger anger is fire it's an element of fire you've got five elements you've got earth fire water air and of course spirit when you feel anger that's fire take a drink of water and douse that fire before you choose to react if you feel that you have no motivation then you need fire all things are positive and negative in their way it's just how you choose to use them you become a master of your own chakra system understand the elemental basis of everything and then you will have a much better way of walking through the world that's our answer we hope we answered your question yes i'm sure that was helpful not only for her but many others as well i know it definitely helped me balance we are drinking water not because we are we are angry but because the throat is dry and that's earth dry earth you can also douse it with water and make it a lot more pliable so. 
Thank you. Yes, I um, was hoping Karen's still doing all right. So um, please let us know. She is fine. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Um, next, we have a question from Omar. He's asking, what is the reason for eye shifting, or excuse me, eye shifting beings, where they shift their eyes while they conversate, mainly, mainly wondering what the slit eyes mean while they're talking to each other? We don't know. We know that the eyes are the window of the soul. And we know you're waiting for some big conspiracy theory answer to quench your thirst for conspiracy. So we will play with you a little bit. We will say that there is inside that being whose eyes are shifting the soul of another. And that may be true. That may not be true. Eyes change in reflection to light, but they also change in reflection to personality, in reflection to emotion. And they may be reflective of the entire soul. We would say not may, but are. And every soul that exists has other existences within it. And that dominant vibration can sometimes come through or bleed through. So in those conversations, especially about certain subjects, there may be eye shifting. It's nothing to fear and we would also say to you, maybe your eyes will shift too at some point, at some moment, because it's well, part of who you are, and that's nothing to fear. If you're looking at a being whose eyes are shifting, and it is who they are, then how is that in any way other than as it should be? There is nothing that is wrong. Why is that something that is perceived as strange? It's rather amazing that a body can have an eternal soul within it and all that that being is, is reflected sometimes within the eyes. That's remarkable and incredible and something to be explored and relished not feared. Fear is an emotion you can choose. It's inhibitive. It doesn't allow expansion, but you can choose it. The eyes are the window to the soul. The soul is eternal. The soul is an amalgamation of all things that you are. And if you really believe that you are part of all that is, then all that is can be reflected within the eyes of the soul that is looking out through those eyes. We think it's pretty great. And we hope that yes. you one day can do the same. That's what we would say to you. Thank you for answering that. And I actually would like to interject something in here quickly on the topic um, in relation to, because this kind of makes me think of shape-shifting and um, that whole topic, which is totally possible and does happen in our reality as I understand it. Um, and in relation to the ascension, as the frequencies continue to rise, there's a lot of talk right now of the silicone beings and how our reality is going to eventually go back 
as the frequencies rise to silicone based reality, whereas right now it is carbon based. And with that, our bodies can change if we want them to um, it, with more of the, the crystalline structure formation. So with that and shape shifting, is there anything you would like to touch on? No. We will only say that all things are possible and it is it is all possible. It is all true. And from our perspective, we are focused here right now in this moment with you. We could also choose to focus on another reality, another state of being where something else would also be true. It's all true. The fact that you are speaking it, you are in some way adding the energy to the creation of it. So there's nothing to fear of it. There's nothing to do about it other than choose to pursue it if you wish or not. There's nothing more. It's true. It's all true. And the progression of you, yourself, your soul, your learning is only relative to where you are right now. So we would encourage you to get engaged in your own self in this moment because that which we talk about eventually happening is a shift of the body. It's a shift of the makeup of the cells of the being. That does not happen in one moment well, in fact, it does happen in one moment, but we would say it doesn't happen in the immediate moment. Mutation and progression is something that is transitional and it happens over time. We would say, and we hope that we don't disappoint anyone, that this progression of time is quite long by your perception of time. It is quite unlikely that anyone here living on this earth will become silicone within the next three to five days, weeks, months, years, or decades even. So while that is quite interesting of a topic, we don't know how relevant it is for the moment. It is true. It will happen. Will it happen tomorrow? No. Will it happen 10 minutes from now? No. Because that is not how the human experience is. If you look at a tree, an old tree, more than likely that tree was still there before you were born. It will be there when you're gone, but you never got to see it be a seed, nor did you see the 10 millionth leaf flourish upon it. We don't want to say that you do not have hope for these things, of course, because you are the building blocks of that happening. You are providing the basis minute by minute, moment to moment of all of these changes that will come. Will they happen suddenly? Not likely. Unless you're in a reality where things happen suddenly. So we encourage you to look at things that you can do now. And don't live for tomorrow, but live in the now. Live in the moment. Change your world in the ways that you can by helping other people until humanity reaches a point 
where everyone is thriving, where everyone is okay, where everyone is able to live safely and with food and water and have health and well-being. There will be no grand exodus into a new greater dimension. You are in the very beginning of the awakening process. And that is where you are now. Karen is listening and she is explaining, though we know it, that there is this drive for people to see ascension, but ascension is individual and more than likely in your ascended selves, you wouldn't choose to come back to this earth ascended. There's very few that come here ascended. The ascending process is coming into this world and figuring out the game and be able to stand within the game. And once you do that, you don't need this process anymore. So we would say to you, and including Karen, if you're here, you're here to learn that it's all a game, it's all okay, and that you have your choice in every moment how to walk in this world. But until you understand that completely, this conversation will never end. The situation will never end. Silicon beings will come eventually. It's all true. But tomorrow, no. Next week, no. A year from now, no. But that shouldn't be the great driving force of your life unless it's your truest passion. We don't want to diminish it in any way. But we would like everyone to wake up to their own abilities they have now and not what will come, but what they can do now. Because now is all we have. Now is all that is. It's always now, 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 now. So we feel like we've depressed the room. No, not at all. At least not for me. I, I was um, not asking in regards to um, how, how do I word it? I'm very excited to hear about this news. And I ask because it's especially exciting to have a better basis of understanding our collective history in this world and, the, and why there are extremely huge mountainous petrified trees that used to be silicone based in relation to the giants and all of that stuff. So it, at least for me, it helps make sense of things that previously were not very easy to um, understand. So it is exciting. <laughs> we would say to you, and we want to also tell you uh, that all of this knowledge that you are seeking because of the length of the history of the world and the fact that not everything was written down correctly, it's all available to you within meditation. So much of real knowledge never can come through words. Words usually can never explain knowing. They will get you there. Books will get you there. But the sage knowledge, the seer knowledge, the true knowing comes from going within. And you will meet there teachers who will teach you in your internal seeking. You will meet the great ascended beings that can tell you your true history of what is coming, what has been. Life is but a moment. It's a blink. And before you know it, you will be blinking through another vehicle or not. 
but the knowledge you seek, you will find internally. And that is the one thing we can say to you with certainty about what will come, what will be, is that inside you can see it all. We've said it before and we will say it again that there's nothing to replace the now moment. And if it helps you to have that knowledge because it gives you comfort and peace, then we say that is wonderful. If you want to know more, go inside and, and find your great teacher that's inside you, that your ascended master, guru, whomever that may be, whatever that is. It's probably an aspect of your higher self that will give you what you want to know. But we again, and, and it seems so fruitless to answer questions about something that is so far away when there's such an immediate now-ness that sometimes is ignored for the sake of daydream or we don't know the word for the sake of what may be what may probably is is it relevant to you in the moment maybe not find your joy in the moment if you are in the moment you don't have a lot of questions and we said it incorrectly earlier, but we will say it again, that ascension is an answer to a question that doesn't even really exist. Because once you ascend, you find out there's nothing to know. <laughs> and there only is what is and what you choose to play with. So enjoy your journey and we hope you find more evidence that will support whatever it is that you want to know. You will always find evidence to support what you believe. That's part of the game. That's part of your own creation to do that. Because everything is true. So. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Yes. I have a question uh, again from Omar. Hi, Omar. Um, he is asking, I'm wondering what it is like when people supposedly die. Are they in another reality as well as this one at the same time? And maybe collective consciousness stuff too. Not sure what he means about the collective consciousness. Yes. Is the answer. When you part this body it's much like walking out of a room because in fact it is a physical thing the soul is not physical there's the perception that you have that you have housed yourself in the body and in fact you have inserted yourself you've given life to this body by being in it at least your perception of being in it but um, we will use the illustration that we use much as a, that of a tree we love trees because trees are great teachers but a tree is on the ground and here's the ground we've got the tree and all the leaves and the trunk and then you've got the root system the ground is like the veil. The ground, in, in, in some ways, you can say, is the veil between the worlds of the conscious world, the earth world, the manifestation world, the material world. And then what's underneath it, the root system, is truly also your soul, the bigger part of your soul, the eternal part of your soul. So. There's conception and the baby starts to be born. And if you look, here comes the tree out of the ground. And that soul is coming up basically into the material world. 
the root system always exists underneath the tree. It's the most important part of the tree. And when the tree above dies, the root system goes and what it does is it, unless it's, you know, don't be very literal because this is not always completely true, but very many times the, the root system will spring another tree up over here and you will have another tree. You think it's a different tree, but in fact, it's part of the same root system. Our root system is just what is the part of all that is. We have the more individualized part closer to the surface, and then we have the oneness where everything is. So when you die, you if you use the analogy of the tree, your tree falls over, and that consciousness that's within that fallen material thing departs, but it sometimes comes up over here, and that can be a different world or a different uh, incarnation, or you may decide that you've had enough walking the planet and you'll stay uh, in the spirit world. That can be one second, it can be millions of years, it can be however long. You can also look at it like it's sometimes you're in between rooms. One foot is outside the room and one foot is in the room. So it's possible to per perceive many different realities at the same time and many different existences. And if you deal with people that are dying, they will start to see that other world many times and start to talk about it and start to have the perception. Because when people many times are going through a long departure from the body, part of the kindness of the universe is to show them that other world so that when it's time to actually leave, they do realize they're going somewhere. So yes is the answer to the question. And if you have more, we will be happy to answer it. But there's very much a practice within Buddhism, and Hinduism, and many of the ancient belief systems, Zoroastrianism, Jainism, where in meditation you actually, and also yoga, where you practice dying, where you get the perception of leaving your body and having the understanding through meditation that you are not in fact dying, but you're only departing and you're withdrawing the consciousness from the physical form. But it's quite joyous, this departure. You will see many people as they pass on, they will smile as they take their last breath. Some scientists will tell you that is a physical reaction. We will tell you it's love. So don't be afraid to die. We wouldn't say pursue it, but we would say don't be afraid of it. It's natural. It will happen to everyone. That is a beautiful answer. Thank you. Yeah. Wonderful. We have a question next from Thea. I believe I'm going to read it for her. I'm not sure. Um, Thea, unless you're able to speak up here, I will uh, just read it quick. Um, she said, I'd love to hear a message from my higher self also as a guiding, as guidance for the coming time. Thank you very much, Theos. One moment. Thea, you are very lovely. And you are one of the people who is searching for purpose. We would say to you, make your purpose your joy and find a way to use that purpose to help other people. It's such a simple, 
communication, but don't be afraid to go out into the world and for whatever reason you've withdrawn quite a bit and that's okay. You've had your hermetic stage, but now it's time to open your door and stick your head out. You have much to share. We'll say this to you. In withdrawing from the world, you gave yourself time to heal wounds that you had. And that was necessary. Your question about what you should do and why you should do it is really the energy building underneath you that is going to help you to move forward. The restlessness now that you feel is a good thing. It's showing you that you're ready to do something and to take some action. So find out what it is you're passionate about and go do that, whatever it is. Maybe it just may be shopping or walking your dog or going to the store, or spending time with friends, which you maybe haven't been doing as much as you should be. But your restlessness, use that to motivate you to move. It's just an indicator that now it's time. So we send you great love and run joyously out your front door and embrace the world. And it'll embrace you right back. We have no doubt whatsoever. Oh, she says great. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> um, next, we have a question from Sarah. Hi, Hello, Sarah. Ladies. How are you? We are fine. We are always as you I are. Have, yes. Mm. <laughs> I have a question based upon um, what you just said about the crystalline beings. Mm. Um, well, when the information was given, uh, mm. the information of the trees turning crystalline, I had no conception or perception about that sort of reality when I just began channeling it. Mm. And so when you say that it has no relevance to the now moment, mm. I'm trying to understand why not if it, if the energy came to make itself known. Mm. Well, we would say that it has no relevance in the moment unless it has relevance for you. But there is no ill will meant in that comment. So please don't think we're negating anything that you have received. The idea that things would become crystalline is true, I think. Have relevance in the moment now, other than the knowledge of it, we don't really know. Because well, for us and our perceptions, happened, but it's already happened with an animal species on this planet. Mm -hmm. And which species would that be? It, it's a caterpillar. Mm -hmm. It's a crystalline supposed, caterpillar. Yes. Well, that's a beautiful both thing. Carbon and crystalline mm -hmm. being. So I'm wondering if this information came because that energy is available right now. It may be available right now because, again, all things are true. Does it change anything in your world now? It's not that human beings are becoming crystalline in this moment. Again, we said things take a long time, and it may be happening very much so within certain species of animals. That's... Mm -hmm. 100% possible because all things are possible in the relevance of it happening we have a cat now wanting to play with mm -hmm. us in yes. the relevance of it happening does it change anything for you other than the knowledge of it if the knowledge of it brings joy and something you wish to pursue then by all means pursue it our comments were more in the idea of living in the now moment Take whatever knowledge 
you have and whatever knowledge comes to you and use it in any way that you can find. But the now moment, we don't perceive that human beings, and maybe we misunderstood the question, but we don't perceive that human beings are becoming crystalline at this very moment, nor will they become crystalline in any immediate now. That's that was our perspective of what is relevant in the moment. And that's what we meant by that. So, Oh, okay. Yeah. But yet the energy keeps coming back. I keep channeling them. Maybe there is someone out there that really needs to know about crystalline caterpillars. And maybe Not that is for you. Not just the caterpillars, the trees themselves. Mm -hmm. And that energy in that realm, that understanding and knowledge. All things have crystalline structures within them. They do, because that is the basis of geometry. That is the basis of cellular structure. Things become crystalline over time. That is true. That accessing crystalline knowledge is something perhaps that you need to pursue. Yeah, because it's coming, whether I'm calling it or not, it's coming, it's here. Mm -hmm very relevant because it keeps coming into awareness on its own okay then we would say to you then explore that and see what it brings you see what it teaches you over time because that's it's coming for a reason to you if something is active within your vibration if this information is coming to you over and over then it's for you to explore it and to understand it and share it with others then yes Thank you. You're welcome. Much love. Much love. Yes, thank you, Sarah. Um, I know, especially in relation to our DNA being activated, our quote, dormant junk DNA, as the scientists call it right now. Um, it's exciting. Things are changing, you know. So I know we're not going to suddenly transform into light bodies and float away, but uh, it's cool. Well, you will at death. You will at your well, death. Yes. But that don't negate the the. the no, to negate the brilliance of that. That is the promise that you have, and it's not far away in relativeness to being becoming a light being. Light beings are without bodies and the quickest way to become a light being is to lose your body. You know, in we were saying again, in many religions, uh, they teach you to practice your death so that death does not come as a surprise, that you can walk within right quickly into your light body and move forward and you don't go through that experience of confusion and things that happen to many beings that are not prepared to let go of the body. But if you think about it on a logical way, though none of this is logical, the light body is who we are. So it's a promise of all. It's a promise to all beings that they will have that body that they have that body and the moment that they have it is at death that may be a new concept for people to think that we would just transition but many races and if you listen to Bashar they do talk about the transition from physical form into light body and it's at the moment of death we have a very curious cat at the moment. Very cute. <laughs> he wants to be part of the conversation. I'm okay with that. Mm. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, okay, that is wonderful. Thank you for elaborating more. And um, this is something that, you know, as you're saying, for those who are interested, delve in more. Definitely. That's true for everything. Delve in more. You know, we we don't want to negate any channeling that anyone has had because we believe that everything is true. Whether we perceive it to be relevant is, is our perception and we have our own perception as well as you. 
having your own. So choose what you want to focus on and choose what you want to explore. That's really all we can say. We feel very strongly that our message is always live in the now and don't live for something that is going to come. If the information that you are getting through the crystalline information is anything other than love, we would say it's not that great of information. If it's telling you to love and to be love, then it's the information that is always true, whether it's what brings it home for you to get it through a crystalline caterpillar or through a tree that's crystalline. That's all perfectly good. The message, the big eternal message is always though that we are eternal and that we are love and and however it takes for you to get there, whatever road and path and joyous experience that it takes you to get there, that's really individual. And we would say travel all of the roads that make you want to travel them with passion and with joy. Okay, mm. wonderful. Um, we have a question. I know we're uh, getting close to running out of time here, mm, but okay. um, we did have a question from Max. He was wondering if you could elaborate. He says, Theos is a Greek word. What was the involvement of the aliens in ancient Greece? Did ancient Greeks come from the Pleiades? From which star? Okay. We've explained the use of the name Theos because Theos is a Greek word. It means a divinity. In the Christian, it can mean God. We don't say that we are God. We are just identifying us ourselves as divine beings but we are also divine as you are divine theos was a word that karen found comfort in when we first started talking to her because it was familiar for her the idea to answer max's question the idea of aliens within the greek world there has never been a time including now that there was not, how do we say, influence from other beings, whether on this plane or on another plane of existence. There's always been help. There has always been focus. You can call aliens gods only because sometimes their ability is not as man's was at the time they had greater ability greater ability for telepathy and for doing what would be considered extraordinary things so they would be considered gods but maybe in fact they weren't gods but other beings from other places other planets other systems so the knowledge that man had at that time, the great pursuit of the mental exercise that was within the Greek philosophy was inspired by times of great thinking and great focus on what was bigger than just being, what was the purpose. And their society led them to pursue that because they had examples of greatness in front of them for them to see. They had architecture that was inspired by experience, inspired by, inspired by things that they saw. So we would just say that there was a closeness to greatness, greatness being vastness of being that's not how we want to say that there was a example before them held within their society within their culture of a belief that man had greatness within him that man could perceive and understand and achieve things greater than just what they had in their immediate disposal that's why you see 
such amazing architecture, such amazing art. That's where some of the great philosophers got their idea, their inspiration, because they had evidence in the world around them that led them to great thinking and great philosophy about how things were. Man was very connected to nature and had the evidence and the experience of that. So that was influenced by beings greater than man. And they were there. They were perceivable by those that let themselves perceive it. Not everyone, of course, but just like today, the people that are inspired by unseen forces are vast and wide. The artists, the musicians, the creators that let themselves pick up those energies. Did they know they were aliens? Maybe a few, maybe not. Did they think they were gods? Yes, they did. That is the answer that we have for you. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have a question from Firstborn. He's asking, yes. could we get an elaboration on a race of beings called the Dracht, or excuse me, Drak that Jay Essex speaks of? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. We do not know of this magic tricks as perspect as, as as specialties, so that we hope we don't disappoint in that way. But that is our specialty is just to bring a different, higher, broader perspective of things. And that is a way to keep everything light and not forget that it's all really a game. What are we proud of? We are not proud. We are perceptive of all. We enjoy it all. We enjoy looking at everything and we appreciate the vastness of possibility and the infinite way that beings and including ourselves are able to change it up, move it around, experience it. We still stand in awe of all that is because from our perspective and we have a broad perspective, it is so huge, everything that is in its vastness, it is all encompassing, it is mind-blowing, even for us. Not that we can't perceive it, but that it takes all time to experience it. And that is always true. So the only thing that we ever want Karen to know and to experience is that all is love, all is right, because it is, or it wouldn't be. And the challenge is always forgetting the reality, quote unquote, that you stand within that tells you something different and to have that knowledge so strongly that you can still enjoy it even when it seems unenjoyable. So, did we answer all of the list of things? You're not sure? Yes, you did. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And with relevance to who we are, we would say that we are as much a part of God as you are. We are not God in the vastness of God. We are beings that are now 
having more consciousness in the non-physical sense, though we have had physical uh, experiences. We experience physically now through Karen as she focuses her attention. But we also sometimes like to be water or air or perceive that. When you come to a certain stage of your existence, and everyone will do this, everyone is in the process and aspects of you are always in every level of existence. That is why the infinite infiniteness of everything is impossible to describe because everything is, everything is always, and it always has been, and it always will be, but it's also still expanding and that when you come to this place where we are now, we can experience something that you may think takes millions of years, but in fact, it's just a blip. And then it's on to the next thing. It's whatever we choose to experience. It's whatever we choose to explore. That's who we are, and that's who we are for now. Maybe next year we'll be your neighbor. We don't. It's a joke. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's wonderful. It's very interesting, a different perspective in that regard. It's very it's hard to communicate because we realize it requires an expansion of mind that is, you can only sort of get it to hear, but and then your mind will slam shut. Um, but when you have those eureka moments of understanding everything and then it's gone, it's only because it would be too much to for your brain to process. It's just, it's not possible. Just as it's not completely possible to see on every ray of every spectrum of light. Right it's not possible to really explain it. But realizing that just like there is entire spectrums of light and sound and matter that we cannot perceive but exist around us at every moment, realize that the universe and the beingness of all is that. But it's not only that, it's continually expanding and expanding and expanding. And it's, it is and it will always be, and it is truly love only. Even the stuff that is sticky for humans. And if you saw it from the perspective of your greatest enemy, your greatest challenge is there to teach you something that you don't know as a being, in this incarnation, then you can really appreciate the teaching of it. That person that you are sparring with in some way is also a teacher because at some point there will be a understanding of what was happening and why. But it's very complicated thing and very complicated to perceive. That's why we will say that you can trust that reincarnation is true, that multiple incarnations are more probable than not to learn and perceive. And you would never be able to do it within one lifetime. So you give yourself the luxury of many, 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 many lifetimes, infinitely so, from every perspective. No one will be able to live your life the way you do, the way you perceive it, and that is the uniqueness that every person will have. And it cannot be replicated. It cannot be duplicated. So therefore, 
everything that happens and needs to happen will happen infinitely because there will never be a lack of things to perceive or experience or to do beyond this earth, beyond this place. But you don't even know what happens when you leave this world. And oh, it's like walking into a vast vastness that you couldn't experience the vastness of. If a world can exist within the drop of water, think what happens when you leave this body. You enter an amazing ocean beyond perception, beyond end. And the ocean is made of millions and millions and millions and billions of drops of water. That is a beautiful way to put it. Um, well, thank you, Theos, for joining us today and especially elaborating more on who and what you are and um, answering our questions. We very much appreciate it. I would like to ask if you have any final um, message or comments you would like to give us. Yes. We would just say to you that the greatest thing, the greatest purpose is to love and serve other people. That is the greatest thing that will right the wrongs of the whole world, serving in any way that you can other people. Truly giving. Because when you give selflessly, you embody all that is good and right, and you truly honor your true being. That is who you really are. So if you want to find a way to be the best you can be, to borrow a very interesting commercial, be the love that changes the world, your immediate world. Be that, serve other people, take care of other people. And there's nothing more that's greater than that. That is the greatest. Knowledge is fine. Knowledge without love is useless. Action is great. Action without love is useless. Meditation is good, but doing nothing with what you learn is useless. What you can do is help other people. What you can do is love other people. So do that and all your questions will evaporate all your need will evaporate and you will have everything because you will be in touch with all that is you will embody that not that you don't it already but you will see it you will know it and that's really the goal and the purpose of life the greatest one you know. Think love, be love. Take care of each other. Be one. Be one. Yes. Thank you, Theos. We love you so much. We appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Much love. Namaste. Namaste. Welcome back, Karen. Thank you. I was wondering if my eyes shifted. <laughs> that was what I, that was my uh, Theos made a little joke as they left. <laughs> yeah. I can't You're see anything. Huh? Yeah, I, I I saw that. I I, I can tell you, I can't see without my glasses, so I have no idea. Now I can see again. I couldn't see the people. I couldn't see any questions. I couldn't see anything. I just oh, saw wow. like... 
this uh, uh, your uh, uh, avatar thing? Is, yeah. Is that yours? Um, it, I'm. It? Oh, I didn't even pick this. The, the Max. Oh, it's different on the screen. No, it's always been the same for him for this account. <laughs> Because I saw it like a, um, it looked like a smiley face at me. But it just looked like that. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh, hey, you had a smiley face. It was like a smiley face. No, sir, let me take my glasses. No, I, I was seeing a smiley face, but like it's just a smiley like thing going, kind of going like this. That's what I was staring at the whole time. That's so funny. That's what I was staring at. <laughs> well. <laughs> Of That's not what it is. <laughs> no, I can see it with my glasses off. It's a crystalline, like a, like a little. It looked like a smiley face to me. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. To totally not that. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, it was a really nice session. I definitely gained a lot from today, um, and I know a lot of other people did too. So thank you, Karen, for joining us. I really appreciate it. Oh, um, it was fun. Yeah. Thank you. It, and some of those questions were, were interesting, especially <laughs> I didn't really word mine the best, but that's okay. In relation to the ask? silicone beings. Well, I oh, was, yeah. What was that about? I don't understand. Yeah, what was that about? I was trying to um, talk about, I should have mentioned our DNA being activated and the transformations we will go through slowly very slowly i certainly didn't mean it like instantaneously unless that's what people want well, but, um, it, it's like a thing like we are moving towards a more silicon uh we, i i think I, I don't i don't really remember what they were saying to be honest but i i was i was thinking when they you said something about silicon i i know that they are saying that in many worlds outside of Earth that for beings to exist, it would, they would have to be in silicon form because of the atmosphere and stuff like that. But I, I don't even know what the question was to be alone. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I didn't word it the best. I was trying to go from talking about slit eyes <laughs> while conversating, which was somebody else's question, to um, shape shifting, to DNA activation, and us changing as our more of our dna comes online so to speak yeah. to the silicone based reality we're moving back into as the frequencies continue to raise and it won't be so carbon based to the crystal and caterpillar that sarah was talking about and all this stuff so i was tying a little bit too much together i think for simple questions. i don't know i don't know <laughs> to be honest, i'd have to go back and listen because i really don't know I, I, I don't know what. Yeah. You know. They, well, they were like, is that really relevant right now for you guys? I mean, come on, well, you're not going <laughs> to. Well, I don't know. I mean, if it if it's relevant, it's relevant. I don't know. It's certainly relevant to me. I mean, I don't, Sarah, I don't know if you're still here, but the, yeah, that information that came through um, from the crystalline beings themselves. Um, that well, Sarah there are beings that are crystalline, aren't there? I mean, yeah. there are. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, and we're going to be hearing more from them because I know that they have incredible messages for our collective. I mean, just the concept for people to understand that uh, this earth has not always been the way that we understand it to be, and the history has been kind of a little bit inaccurate until now. Uh, yeah, I think they me. did say something about the history, you know, if you really want to learn it's, it's something that they said to me the other day, and I heard somebody else say recently, and it's not anything you want to know, you truly know, is is you're gonna you're probably not gonna learn it from a book. You're gonna learn it from, uh, you know, from a higher plane teacher, and you know that's part of the mysteries and stuff like that. I mean, you you learn them. Um, by tuning in and, and stuff like that. But some of that knowledge, you know, ultimately I think <clears throat> all knowledge is really to try to get you to truth, the truth being, you know, that we're love and, and all those things. So maybe I think that's probably what they're trying to say is that, yeah. 
It all has to, it should all lead you to a place because it's, if it's just knowledge, it's just knowledge and you just know it, it's, it's good. But it's just like, I know how to wire a lamp, but I don't know that that, you know what I mean? I mean, it's not, I don't, I don't know. It's not to diminish any of it. I, yeah. I think that, sorry, I'm moving around. It's just that some things for them are more, it's not really their message. I guess maybe that's what they were saying. I don't, I, I'm saying it, but I don't know what they said. So I can't even respond to it. <laughs> it was interesting. It was an interesting take on it. You know, it, I mean, it makes sense. Of course, the ascension is a very slow process. It's not like we're instantaneously doing anything. Well, you know, the I, journey. Nope, so, high. I think the thing is too, like we, we forget, and I've had this, I have this, I have these conversations when I walk my dogs because I, I talked with Theos at that time as I'm walking down the street and. There's been several times that I've had the idea about, you know, we we don't value enough what's happening right now, the part we're playing in stuff, the foundation we're laying that, that will be picked up and taken by other people. And maybe it's an aspect of my age that I'm starting to look at the world like this. But, you know, if you think about like the, the wall of China, it took, what, a thousand years to build it? You know, the guy who laid the first stone never saw the completion of it, but it didn't negate the value that that first stone had. The guy who dreamed of the wall, who perceived it, who, who designed it, he had a vision that created something great, but the, but the actual end result of it wasn't as... You know, it's now you see the Great Wall of China and you think it's spectacular, but now it's just a wall that's there and people look at it and go, wow, this pretty amazing wall. But think of all the effort that went into making that wall and that moment and all that, that that was what was relevant is that the every brick that was laid or whatever the walls made of every stone that was put all the effort to continue. And the thing that was interesting to me about a, the China wall is that the continued effort of knowing that they were building something and knowing that they would never see the end of it. I think that's actually more impressive than the actual wall that's there now, you know, and we forget yeah. as beings our part in, in laying the foundation for what is there. I think if you want to see immediate results, paint a wall because you will see it immediately, but, but building something, on, especially in a spiritual way, especially for humanity of laying the foundation of it, knowing that that whatever you do has that ripple effect and really appreciating that and, and being willing to do that part, have your part in it is, is, is sort of more important than seeing all the other stuff. And maybe that's, I'm hearing that's kind of what they were trying to say. Just don't, don't get so focused on something way out here when, right here could really use your attention very much so but i but again i am not sure what they were talking about i'm just thinking that that's what they're saying hey, Karen. <laughs> I don't know. yeah how would i uh, contact you you mentioned about people being on your show for interviews yeah what's a good way to um contact you and find out about that you can um here i'll type my email and just send me an email you contact me right now. So I'm right here. <laughs> well, that right here, right friend. now. Um, I, I yeah, got I was running around here. Yeah. Send, Thank you, Karen. I'm gonna put your contact information in the YouTube description and everything, so people can access okay. that later as well. Um, you can send me an email here. Let me give you a better email. Um, choose this one. I think it's the best one. Um, Don't, don't give it out. They can contact me through Human Colony if they need to, but um, they can use this one. That one's also fine for people in the chat who can see it. They can have that one. Okay, sure. And then, um, yeah, I'll put instructions in the description for how to contact yeah. you otherwise for interviews and other things. Now, um, Karen, you don't, do you do any private? Yeah, I do. If you want, okay. if you would like a private reading, um, I would be happy to give you one for donation and um yeah you can also contact me 
contact me via the human colony, but I'm happy to do part of it. Wonderful. So, okay, so you do um, readings. Are they mostly channelings? Um, they can be a combination. If you want a channeled reading, I'm, I can also do a, a more of a, a intuitive reading as well. So it's up to you. Great. You, yeah. Okay, wonderful. Okay. Then I will include that in the description. And with that said, um, I think we should maybe just finish up here with a few blessings. If anybody would like sure. to give a blessing, I know I would uh, kind of like to give one, and then we can probably wrap it up. All right. Um, so if anyone would like to go afterwards, I'm not sure. Um, but let me try to get in the zone here. <laughs> I'm still a little new to all of this. Niata kasho to yahara tosho no to mo yata ka no tosho yata ha ma yata ka ina tosho a ma soro kosho to yata ino to to kosho no to yahara tosho no to yo ko mo to mo ha yata kasho ta ya mo sho na ta ta ya ta hi ya to sho ta ya mino to kosho to. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? I'll do one. Thank you, Sarah. Mm hmm. <laughs> Namaste. Namaste. Sarah. Anyone else? All right. I think that. Oh my God, my cat. Sorry. Um, I think that. That's much okay. My dog's making all kinds of noises. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's crazy, crazy animals everywhere. Um, then I think we should probably wrap up for today. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. It was very nice having Karen back here. And stay tuned for future events. Oh, and again, um, we do have a jump page now, as Max calls it, for the Human Colony events. We will be posting that in the description. It, um, it has a simple URL. So um, please. Visit our jump page if you want to get information about further events or go to humancolony.org. So thank you everyone, much love, and we will see you all soon. Bye-bye.